Hello folks, it's Wednesday evening and we are going to continue our study in the book of James tonight. I uh, welcome you in and hope you're doing well, hope you've enjoyed the first snow of the season and uh, it was beautiful and thankfully I didn't have to drive much in it so it was okay with me. That's the only thing I don't like about the cold ice and snow, like everything except the driving in it um, but uh, it was really really pretty so uh, we're going to open up uh, James chapter 2 um, and look at a couple of verses in that it, um, it's right in that section that we looked at before we were talking sort of the faith versus works uh, argument the faith that's out there and uh, it's one of the illustrations James uses to talk about that uh, as that chapter goes on. So that's where we'll be here in just a moment. Um, why don't we begin our study with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into it. Our good God, we bow in your presence. We're thankful for um, this medium that you've made available in our world to be able to communicate in a time when we can't be together as much as we'd like to. Uh, we pray that we use it wisely and that you'll bless it uh, all over the world because it's sure being used a lot. Help us tonight to learn something from your word and your servant James in particular as he talked about what it means to be your friend. Uh, thank you for loving us. Uh, we pray that your kingdom will, will come, will grow, and that we can be a part of that. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So there was a uh, pretty well-known football coach years past whose name was uh, Pep Pepper Rogers. He uh, coached UCLA. It's one of the places he coached, and that's where he became sort of well-known. And uh, he found himself in the middle of a, a pretty rotten season. And it got so bad that it actually upset every area of his life, not just his work, but even his home life. And uh, he, he talks about it. He says, my dog was my only friend. I told my wife that a man needs at least two friends. And so she went out and bought me another dog. Uh, she apparently believed that old saying that a dog is a man's best friend and uh, took that pretty seriously. Uh, there was a couple whose names were Bob and Lynn. Uh, they weren't uh, what they would consider good neighbors to those who lived around them, but one day they saw a moving van in front of the house across the street, and they decided, let's, let's change this about ourselves and, and, uh, and try and be a good neighbor. So Lynn prepared some homemade bread, and, and together she and Bob approached the house, and when someone answered the front door, Lynn said, Hi, we wanted to welcome you to our neighborhood. Here's some bread for you. Uh, just a little side note. That was one of the great things when we moved to, to our neighborhood here uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, our neighbors all did that for us. That was just a really neat blessing. Uh, but anyway, in this story, they decided that they'd be nice uh, to their neighbors. And they took bread across, they, 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 they crossed the street to the house. And when someone answered the front door, Lynn said, again, hi, we want to welcome you. Here's some bread for you. And the woman who answered the door said, well, thank you very much for your kindness. But this is a little awkward. You see, we're not moving in. We're moving out. We've lived here for 10 years. Now, sometimes it's like that. Uh, in our neighborhoods these days, unfortunately, um, you know, the type of neighborliness uh, that was common in, in past years maybe isn't quite as common anymore. And uh, true friendship and neighborliness, uh, you know, it's a precious commodity, thus it's rare in our world. And I think maybe one way of addressing that deficit is we have to make the most of um, 
the most important friendship we can possibly have uh, and, and establish that first. And then after that, all the rest of our relationships can, can fall into place. And I think that the first relationship uh, that each of us were made to have was with God. Uh, we were made to be friends with God. He is our creator. He's our maker. He's the one with whom we have to do. Uh, he made us to have a relationship with him. He made us, in fact, to be his friend. And it's amazing when we get that relationship right, how much more we can improve other relationships in our lives. And as sort of a case study in this, uh, think about Abraham for just a few minutes with me. Abraham, of course, is one of the great names of the Bible, one of the great heroes. Uh, I think I've stated before, even in this study, that he is looked up to as a father uh, of all three major world religions today, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Uh, his name, Avraham, originally, Avraham means father of a multitude. And that goes back to the initial promise God made to him, the covenant promise, and so forth. But, you know, to me, it, that all sort of shrinks in comparison to the way he's described in the scriptures. Uh, three different occasions in the Bible, Abraham is called the friend of God. And uh, that's something I would certainly aspire to be known as. Uh, to be the friend of God, to be able to say God is my friend would be a great thing. Now, we have to keep in mind that God is God, and we are not. Um, he is certainly my creator, and my king, and the one I worship, and the one I need to obey. I wouldn't want to take away from that aspect of God at all, but God certainly can also be my friend. In fact, I was made to be his friend. Um, Abraham certainly was, as we said, uh, the friend of God. He earned that descriptor in Scripture. And I want us to look at one of the places here in James 2 where um, he's described this way. So, again, uh, this comes in the midst of that passage where he's talking about faith and works and how they go together. But in verse 23, and, and we'll read down through verse... I'm sorry, verse 21, we'll read down through verse 23. It says, There was not Abraham, our father, justified by works, when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar. That recalls that story back in Genesis 22, uh, if you need to refresh your memory on that. But was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness. And he was called a friend of God. So that's... Uh, that that's the the uh, active phrase we want to focus on for a few minutes tonight in our study. Abraham believed God. It was counted to him, credited to him as righteousness, the fact that he believed God, and he was called, as a result, a friend of God. Uh, powerful words in in those few verses there. So what do we what do we mean? What do we think when when Abraham is called the friend of God? The word uh, in James, translated friend, is is originally the word phylos. Uh, it it denotes uh, in Greek a close personal relationship. Um, it's used, of course, several places throughout the New Testament. Uh, it means basically the same thing we mean when we say friend. There's not a lot of difference in the Greek word and what we mean by friend in English. So a friend, that person that you're, you're close to, the person that you share much in common with, the person maybe that you hang out with, 
maybe that person you grew up with. Abraham had that kind of special relationship even with the God of the universe. And I assert uh, that that same kind of relationship to God can be had by each one of us. Um, that's the reason that this is included in Scripture for us. Now, like any friendship, it can't be forced. Now, that's one of the things I see in you know, people that are sort of struggling to make friends that they they if they're having a difficult time for whatever reason, they, they tend to force it. Friendship is not something that can be forced. God's not going to force any one of us to be his friend. In other words, uh, he wants to be. He wants to be in relationship with us, but we have to choose it. It has to be a, a free choice on our behalf. And we really have a big choice to make. We can be a friend of God, or uh, the alternative is we can be a friend of the world. And uh, if you turn just a couple of chapters further in James, if you go over to chapter 4, James writes in verse 4 of chapter 4. So James 4, 4, he writes, Don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity or hatred with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So there's this choice that James sets up. It's a big choice and pretty clear cut. It's, it's one of those black and white kind of choices. It's either uh, the world or God, one or the other. It can't be both. I can't sort of be friends with both. Um, and Abraham made his choice. And... Uh, there's a lot to that in the Abraham story. You know, he, he left sort of a cultural center of the world in Ur of the Chaldees and became a wanderer the rest of his life, went to a land he did not know. I mean, he'd left any kind of security and, and wealth um, that he had in Ur to go to uh, a cow pasture in Canaan, uh, followed where God called him. He made his choice, and uh, and each one of us has to make ours as well. Uh, ours might not seem as dramatic as Abraham's, uh, but it's certainly a choice to make. And and I want us to look at one other passage that might classify as sort of a friend passage. And to me, it's, it's a really important one because it uh, comes from the lips of Jesus. Um, John chapter 15, John 15, Jesus is speaking to his closest followers. He says a lot of incredible things in that chapter. For instance, in uh, verse 12, he says, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And then in verse 13, he says, greater love has no one than this, that Someone lays down his life for his friends. But the one I really want us to think about uh, in connection with our study tonight is the next one he says in verse 14. Uh, again, we're in John 15. Jesus tells uh, his disciples and, and now us in a very brief statement how one becomes his friend. So he sort of lets us in on the secret to friendship with him. How does one become a friend of Jesus? How does one become a friend of God? John 15, verse 14. You are my friends. What? If you do what I command you. Uh, now that might not work in uh, everyday friendship between you and me or, or someone, uh, a fellow human being, uh, to say, oh, you're my friend if you do everything I say or whatever I command you. That might not really work in human relationships uh, every time, but this is how friendship with God is, is different. Uh, Jesus says, you're my friends if you do what I command you. And, and so... The great thing about this saying of Jesus is that it bridges the gap for us in this 
sometimes uncomfortable idea that we can be friends with God. Uh, some people are made uncomfortable with that idea. Um, you know, we think, a lot of people think of God only as this great, powerful being who is so far above us. You know, he is someone to be worshipped, to be bowed down to, um, to be served. How can we be friends with him? you know, in the way that we would normally think of friends. Well, it can happen for two reasons. First and foremost, in Jesus, um, that great God, way out there, way above us, the Creator, came very near to us in flesh and blood in His Son, Jesus the, the Christ. Um, he was someone who walked like us and talked like us. Uh, he shared our humanity. Uh, as a child said one time, he is God with skin on. And so that's, that's a reason it's possible. The second reason that we can be friends with God is what Jesus said here in 15th chapter of John, that... Um, you're my friends uh, if you do what I command you. We can be friends with God, uh, and, and the reason we can is that we obey God. Now, look at what Jesus said just a little bit more closely. Uh, he says, you are my friends. Notice how personal that is. He wants a relationship with you. And a close one. I sort of imagine that, that the creator, God of the universe, Jesus was there in the beginning with God, uh, and God created everything through him, Scripture says. That person wants you among his friends. It's just an incredible idea in itself. Uh, the next word that Jesus speaks is, is also very important. He says, if. You are my friends, if. So there is a condition on this relationship. And uh, as we said before, you know, God's not going to force you or me into a relationship with him. It's something we have to choose. And we have to do something to make it happen. Uh, and, th and that's why he says, you are my friends if you do. And then he closes with the words, what I command you. So here's where we see a little bit of the difference. Um, friendship with God versus friendship with, uh, you know, my best buddy on earth. That kind of thing. Uh, we, we remember here that he is God. He has the right to command. We are his creation. We don't have the right to say what we will and won't do uh, to be his friend. You know, we, we don't set the terms of the friendship. He won't force us to be his friend. But if we're going to be his friend, we're going to have to do so on his terms because he's God. So again, he says, you are my friends if you do what I command you. And that's just some words that that I think would be good to leave us all to ponder um, and to ask, am I, am I indeed the friend of God? Do I want to be the friend of God? Now, God has done everything possible to make you his friend. Uh, he sent his only son into the world to live and to die for us uh, in order to establish a relationship with us. Um, and because that son went to the cross and, and then came out of the tomb on the, on the third day, we can be in relationship with God. We can be a friend of God, in fact, beyond this world for all eternity. Uh, but the key is in this statement. Uh, we've had the example of Abraham, who is the friend of God, uh, he was in covenant with God, relationship with God. God asked him to do something, sacrifice his son. 
uh, which was a test of Abraham's belief and faith. And Abraham was willing to do that, although God stopped him, you see. And then I always wondered if, if Abraham is picked out to be described as the friend of God because God knew centuries later he, he indeed would offer his own son and that wouldn't be stopped. He would offer his own son, Jesus, as a sacrifice. Like he asked a Abraham to offer Isaac, but he stopped Isaac. God didn't stop in his offer of Jesus to us. And so Abraham is called the friend of God. And we can be God's friend if we'll do what he's commanded us. If we'll indeed uh, obey him, it'll be counted to us as righteousness. We can have the righteousness of Christ because we have followed the words of Christ. Uh, sometimes in, uh, in our day and age, um, the sort of social friendship, uh, we like this idea, this thought of being the friend of God, uh, but this idea of being obedient and, and submissive to God's terms uh, isn't quite as popular. And really, we need to be in balance on that. It's almost akin to the debate about faith and works. Um, you know, James says, uh, show me your faith, I'll show you my works. And you've got to have both in order to be uh, in balance spiritually. And the same goes for, for friendship with God. So we have this great example of Abraham here in James chapter 2, and uh, it, it serves as a good reminder to us of what we've been offered in our relationship with God. So that is our study for tonight. Next week, I think we're going to be in the third chapter. We're going to move on chapter 3 of, of James and see what kind of trouble we can get into there. Uh, but uh, I'm enjoying um, offering you this study and I realized uh, once we went online tonight that I forgot to send you out a handout this week. There is a handout for this, but you don't have it because I didn't email it to you. I'll try and get back on track and do that next week. But hope you have a great rest of your evening. God bless you. And uh, may we all work on our friendship with one another and with our, our very generous God. Uh, take care. We'll see you soon.